Speaking Section Directions In this section of the test, you will be able to demonstrate your ability to speak in English about a variety of topics by answering four questions. In the test, question one is about a familiar topic. Your response is scored on your ability to speak clearly and coherently about the topic. In questions two and three, your responses are based on what you have read and heard. First, you read a short text. The text goes away, and then you listen to a talk on the same topic. You are then asked a question about what you have read and heard. You need to combine appropriate information from the text, and then the talk to provide a complete answer to the question. For question four, you listen to part of a lecture. You are then asked a question about what you have heard. Your responses to questions two through four are scored on your ability to speak clearly and coherently and on your ability to accurately convey information about what you have read and or heard. Question one. Directions. You will now be asked a question about a familiar topic. After you hear the question, you will have 15 seconds to plan your response and 45 seconds to speak. Nowadays, distance learning and online classes are becoming more prominent. Do you think this is a better option than traditional classrooms? State your, state your preference and explain why. Use specific reasons and examples in your response. After you hear the question, you will have 15 seconds to plan your response and 45 seconds to speak. And your time begins now. Now you have 45 seconds to speak. You may begin speaking now. Sample answer. In today's rapidly advancing technological landscape, distance learning and online classes have undeniably gained prominence, offering flexibility and accessibility to education. However, whether this method is superior to traditional classrooms depends on various factors, including individual learning styles, resources, and the nature of the course. Personally, I believe that both approaches have their merits and demerits. Online classes provide the convenience of learning from anywhere, accommodating diverse schedules, and allowing access to a wealth of digital resources. This flexibility is particularly advantageous for working professionals, parents, or individuals with geographical constraints. Moreover, online platforms often encourage self-discipline and time management skills, essential in today's competitive world. On the other hand, Traditional classrooms foster a sense of community, enabling immediate interaction with teachers and peers. Face-to-face -face learning promotes active discussions, collaborative projects, and hands-on experiences that might be challenging to replicate in an online classes. For practical subjects like laboratory-based sciences or arts, physical classrooms provide essential resources and mentorship that are integral to the learning process. Inclusion, the effectiveness of distance learning versus traditional classrooms depends on the learner's needs and the subject matter. Question 2. Directions. You will now read a short passage and then listen to a conversation on the same topic. You will then be asked a question about the passage. After you hear the question, you will have 30 seconds to prepare your response and 60 seconds to speak. You have 45 seconds to read the passage below. You may begin reading now.
Now listen to a conversation between two students. Hey Sue, did you see this article? Yeah, I did. I don't think that's a very good idea. Really? You don't think it's a safety hazard, like they said? No, at least not during the day. I'm pretty sure both of those accidents happened at night when it's harder to see cyclists. They didn't say that in the article. Oh, that does make a difference. Sure, it does. Maybe at night with low visibility, there's a safety hazard. But I don't think there's any danger in the daytime, which is when most people need to move around and get to classes. Yeah, that makes sense. Besides, it's such a big campus. If they do this, it's going to be really hard to get around. Well, we can always take the bus, I guess. But the bus is only. Only run once an hour. That's true. They're not very convenient. No, not at all. If people have to take the bus, we'll end up sitting around waiting for the next one all the time, and we're all too busy to waste our time doing that. Now answer the question. The woman expresses her opinion of the proposed policy change. State her opinion and explain the reasons she gives for holding that opinion. Your preparation time starts now. Now you have 60 seconds to speak. Your time starts now. Sample answer. The woman firmly opposes the proposed policy change discussed in the article. She argues that the idea is not a good one, primarily because she doesn't believe it poses a safety hazard during the daytime. Sue points out that the accidents mentioned in the article occurred at night when visibility is low, a crucial detail omitted from the report. She emphasizes that most people, including students like them, need to move around during the day, especially to attend classes on their large campus. Sue also raises concerns about the inconvenience the policy change would cause, making it difficult for everyone to navigate the campus. Additionally, she highlights the impracticality of relying on buses, which run infrequently, making it inconvenient for busy individuals like them who cannot afford to waste time waiting for the next bus. Sue's opinion is grounded in the consideration of both safety and practicality, leading her to strongly oppose the proposed change. Question 3. Directions. You will now read a short passage and then listen to a lecture on the same topic. You will then be asked a question about the passage. After you hear the question, you will have 30 seconds to prepare your response and 60 seconds to speak. You have 45 seconds to read the passage below. You may begin reading now. Now listen to part of a lecture on the topic in a psychology class. This happens all the time with kids in schools. 
Say there's a little boy or girl who's just starting school. Well, they're not really used to the rules about proper behavior for a classroom. So at the beginning, they might, I don't know, interrupt the teacher, walk around the classroom when they're supposed to be sitting down. You know, just misbehaving in general. Okay, but what happens? Well, the teacher gets angry with them when they act this way. They might get punished. They have to sit at their desks when everyone else is allowed to go outside and play, and they certainly don't like that. Soon they'll learn that this kind of behavior gets them in trouble. They'll also learn that when they raise their hand to talk to the teacher and sit quietly and pay attention during class, they're rewarded. The teacher tells them she's proud of them and maybe puts little happy face stickers on their homework. Now that their behavior gets a good reaction from the teacher, the kids learn to always act this way in class and not behave the way they used to. Using the example from the lecture, explain what behavior modification is and how it works. Now answer the question. Using the example from the lecture, explain what behavior modification is and how it works. You have thirty seconds to prepare your response, and your time starts now. Now you have sixty seconds to speak. Your time starts now. Sample answer. Behavior modification, as illustrated in the example, is a psychological approach that aims to change or alter specific behaviors through a system of rewards and punishments. In the context of the classroom, behavior modification involves reinforcing positive behaviors and discouraging negative ones. When a child initially displays disruptive behavior, the teacher responds with punishment, such as making them stay inside during playtime. This negative consequence serves as a deterrent, discouraging the child from repeating the behavior. Conversely, when the child demonstrates desired behaviors like raising their hand and paying attention, they are rewarded with praise and positive reinforcement, like receiving happy face stickers. Through this process of reinforcement, the child learns to associate positive actions with positive outcomes, shaping their behavior in alignment with the classroom rules. Behavior modification operates on the principle that behaviors followed by rewarding consequences are more likely to be repeated, while behaviors followed by negative consequences are less likely to recur, thus guiding individuals toward desirable conduct. Question four. Directions. You will now listen to part of a lecture. You will then be asked a question about it. After you hear the question, you will have twenty seconds to prepare your response and sixty seconds to speak. The wind is created mainly due to variations in air pressure. The wind flows from the high pressure area to the low pressure area to maintain a balance. There are various types of winds. One such type is the local winds. Mountain wind and valley wind are two related, localized winds that occur one after the other on a daily cycle. Mountain winds occur during the nighttime when the slopes of a mountain cool down rapidly as they radiate heat. At this time, the valley is relatively warm. As a result, cold and heavy winds blow down the slope of the mountain towards the valley. 
Due to these winds, the valley is relatively cold and is covered with a dense fog. These winds can reach high speeds, posing challenges for the planes or birds flying above and human activities in the valley. Hence the area is not densely populated. Valley winds are created during the day. The sun heats the slopes of a mountain, causing the air to warm and rise. As the warm air rises, it creates a low-pressure area near the slopes, and cooler air from the valleys rushes up to fill the gap. For this reason, the winds blow upwards along the slope of the mountain. The valley winds are typically gentle. The valleys remain cloudless and have a pleasant and comfortable weather because of these winds. Therefore, the population is relatively high in the upper part of wind-affected mountains. It's worth noting that mountain and valley winds can vary greatly depending on local weather conditions, topography, and the time of day or year. Using points and examples from the lecture, explain mountain and valley winds. Now answer the question. Using points and examples from the lecture, explain mountain and valley winds. Your time starts now. Now you have 60 seconds to speak. Your time starts now. Sample answer. Mountain and valley winds, as described in the lecture, are localized wind patterns influenced by variations in air pressure and temperature. Mountain winds occur at night when the mountain slopes cool rapidly, radiating heat. As a result, the air in the valleys becomes relatively warmer. Old, heavy winds flow down the mountain slopes towards the valley, creating dense fog and low visibility. These winds can be fast-moving, posing challenges for aviation and human activities, leading to sparser population in the valley areas. Conversely, during the day, the sun heats the mountain slopes, causing the air to, to rise and creating a low-pressure area. Cooler air from the valleys rushes up to fill this gap, resulting in gentle winds blowing upwards along the mountain slopes. These valley winds bring pleasant weather conditions, keeping the valleys cloudless and comfortable. The local weather conditions, topography, and time of day or year significantly influence the intensity and characteristics of these mountain and valley winds.